Hold on, I don't want to go live yet. Here it is. Public. I'm glad I saw that. Wow, it did it again. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, folks, welcome to Faith, Family, and Friends. Looks like things are streaming as they should be. I had to make a couple of adjustments. Sometimes our streaming live um, audio, um, audience selection or what we call that, whatever, will go just, it's only me. And I'm glad I saw that tonight. So we had to switch it to public. And we wanted to get on just a little bit early before Johnny Cox comes on our special guest on this special edition of Faith, Family, and Friends Tuesday night to accommodate Johnny's uh, cancer treatments. Uh, Monday, he's just so tired from going all the way to Bangor, coming back down, but we're so excited to have him on and to share his life on the water down East Maine. But we'll just give you an update of what we're doing in terms of our uh, next few weeks. Uh, guests, we are wide open for March, except for the last Monday, March. Uh, we do have Leon Patillo coming uh, on board with us. He was a CCM artist back in the 80s and 90s. Uh, used to be with the group Santana. Uh, his uh, date to come on with us is Monday, first Monday in April on the 5th. And we hear his story of how he got saved from the group Santana and uh, did music for the Lord for years. Uh, we also have um, just a bunch of other, other ideas uh, that we're kind of waiting to hear from. A couple of friends from Berkshire Christian College Dale and Elaine Haas, and also a fellow that we found out about his last name is Wesley. And he does uh, acapella music, and it's, he's unbelievable. He's wow. He sings with himself, like with all the, different parts. Yeah, and he, he does one special one. He does the music going up all through the years. Yeah, yeah. that's all I... And you're wondering uh, about our hats tonight. Well, we may do a uh, Zoom, if our son is watching tonight, of the skateboarding... Uh, uh, business that he has uh, out of his home where he sells skating, skateboard uh, paraphernalia. This is a low card. My wife and I both have hats and we're just uh, promoting his, his stuff. He's a great skater. Uh, he's been skating for years and so we may have him on board at bad some point. Boards. It's a bad little boy. So praise God. It is good to be with you tonight. One other announcement that I, I said earlier that I would be making tonight uh, and uh, yeah, I think it's really exciting. We have purchased uh, our church, Fort Christian Church, has recently purchased a 10 channel soundboard and uh, an accompanying mic to live stream our daily morning light and our um, Monday night shows, Faith, Family, Friends, from the bowels of the gym, what I call the inner sanctum uh, in the church. Right where the box is and the internet, we just got a new box. I just saw it over there. Oh, good. New modem, and uh, the connection should be better. The audio be, will be way better. Um, I'm going to try to get used to it. I'm not real tech savvy. I've had to be through the years being a DJ and working radio, but we've got a great man in Mark Landon and his, his sister uh, Becky who help us with sound, and it should be really fun. We're actually sort of starting to think. And maybe we could do music, Christian music, uh, for an hour when we don't have guests or uh, Monday through Friday at, at say, 9 o'clock uh, because uh, we want to customize and play some of that old, good old stuff as well as some new stuff that doesn't get a whole lot of traction, Christian indie music. So pray for us. It's exciting to uh, be using that new equipment fairly soon. And so that's that announcement. Do you have anything else that you want to share, Amy? As we wait for Johnny to get on board, um, we do have feelers going out to and pray that we would be able to hear back from them. Really, I want to say this. We think maybe I'm jumping the gun to assume this, but I think so many of us undermine the power of prayer. Uh, 
if you if we could have a prayer covering for this ministry and and for our church uh, maybe that would be a good thing i'd like to sign up if you'd like to become a prayer partner uh for Fulton christian church and faith family friends and our different ministries the morning light i know that we just got on board with a friend out of new york city uh whom i had a dream about didn't even know him before we became a friend and the well church um pastor aaron and his crew there in New York City, in Manhattan. And he put my wife and I on that prayer list. We had a dream, I had a dream about that church before I even knew they existed, the well. And so it's good, I know that we're on Dawson Donna's uh, prayer list and we try to keep up with their everyday daily prayer, uh, walkers and rockers, right? So God's doing some amazing things uh, as he has through the decades, but prayer is at, I, I hesitate to say at an all time high, but I, I like to think it, it really is right now for our nation. The need is certainly at an all time high and whether we're our prayers are matching that only God could tell. So I covet your prayers. I, I will try to formally put that out there so that you can, I know a lot of you are connected with other prayer movements. We certainly don't want to talk or take you away from that or burden you with any kind of false condemnation. Oh, am I a bad Christian if I don't sign up for Pastor Ralph's prayer and I'm signed up for Dawson's or this other? No, it's okay. It's all good. But certainly uh, prayer covering for this, because we know what the devil does to fight this and to fight our church and to mess things up. You guys know that. Let's increase our prayer covering for each other, generally speaking. And, and we'll see God bust through and bring the kingdom of heaven down. It was it Jesus that said, the kingdom of heaven is taken by force. In other words, you have to make an effort because the, there's an all out attack from the demonic forces of hell that are being released in these last days, in these evil days that we're living in, mm -hmm. to uh, thwart the purposes of God. I'm gonna get preaching by you here. Oh yeah. Calm me down here. Get oh, drink my coffee. <laughs> so let's open with a word of prayer for our show tonight. And I know Rebecca and Johnny are listening. And I said, come at, at, at 7.30. She's got a whole bunch of people watching. Uh, this is our second time uh, with Rebecca kind of being on board. but. She's going to let her father talk, and he can talk. And I mean that in a good way. I can't wait to hear his stories and to connect with Johnny. Uh, a lot of us owe so much to him for keeping the resources in Down East Maine, particularly Jonesboro area, uh, up and running, clams and lobsters. And so I want to hear how he started all that. And, and uh, we want to also talk to him about his recent bout with cancer and get a chance at the end to pray for him. So, uh, so let's just open with prayer. And my wife, maybe. Could you open us in prayer? Sure. Lord, we're so thankful for this chance yes. to uh, mm. be on the air and Amen. to uh, interview mm. Johnny and see Rebecca again. We're yes, just Jesus. thankful for this opportunity tonight. Mm. We ask that you'll bless it and bless the words that go forth mm. in your name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm put my hat back on. <laughs> These are the kind of hats they wear in Dallas. Me. Sometimes they wear them above their ear. The ears stick out. Me. But <laughs> I have a plumber hat. I don't know. But well, thank my son, Aaron Ackley, for these hats and promote low cards. So anytime that uh, you want to get a board, board shop, that little board shop. Yes. And tonight we're going to touch base with a real down east. Now, you may have had clams in a restaurant. You may have had lobster in a restaurant. The clams and lobsters are pretty much a mainstay in restaurants throughout the country. Mm -hmm. But have you ever talked to a live down East Maine fisherman and clam harvester. You're going to see one tonight, a live one. <laughs> and God bless Johnny. And so let's see if we can make connection. I thought I heard a voice. Uh, there we are. Hey, John, what's going on? Uh, cold weather. <laughs> I heard oh, that. Wow. I heard negative seven or something crazy. crazy. Wow. Yeah, wind chill beyond that, but uh, we. It's Matt. We'll live through it. Yeah, you will. Hey, Andrew, you guys got the fancy mic going. That's great. Wow. Yeah, I guess. I love, husky. I love that dog. Uh, oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, it is so good. I just want to say to you before we uh, let you talk, and I want to let you talk. Take us back to when you first started fishing and how the industry has changed through the years. But I just want to thank you on behalf of Down East Maine and, and Maine itself for how you uh, have allowed God to use you through the years to uh, keep this resource going. Lobsters, clams, I know it's taken a lot of other people too, but you've had your eye on the industry and 
And uh, we owe a lot to a lot of people, but I want to thank you personally. And, and I want to personally thank you for, I don't get a chance, for showing me the Chandler River. <laughs> it's a natural resource. Oh my gosh, I miss the Chandler. And when we get up uh, in the summertime, we try to try to get up there and get some sea trout, but you showed me some good spots along that river. So thank yep. you. <laughs> well, it's uh, God give it there. That's right. For us to take. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And well, take us back to when you first started hauling traps and digging clams. And what was it like for you? Did, did your dad teach you, train you up, or uncles? Uncles friends? and my father. Okay. In fact, when it's like two worlds. Okay. When I when I started, a clam license was three dollars. Oh my goodness! Wow. A state. Yeah. Wow. wow. And no restrictions. I mean. Something. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, my lobster license at the time was ten. Oh my goodness. No restrictions. No restrictions. <laughs> None. Just get a license None. and get some yep. traps and go. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And I mean, because bait was seventy-five cents a can. Yeah, which yep. is now thirty some odd dollars. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Goodness. And now, did you have the wooden traps or wire? Oh yeah. When I started, it was nothing but uh, the old wooden ones. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was one of the first ones in the seventies, early seventies, to start mm -hmm. making them for fishermen. Oh really? I remember that when you were making them. Yeah. The wire ones. Wire. Well, the, yeah. No, the the, the wooden. Still the wooden ones. Wooden. Yeah. Yep, it was uh, late eighties when the uh -huh. wire actually first okay. kicked in. Cool, but which is a lot no, better. Plant, people, people that aren't in the know, uh, maybe wouldn't think that uh, wire is better because the wooden lobster traps probably had uh, a lower shelf life because the wood would rot over the years. Right. Well, it. Well, yeah. I, I sit back now and look at our environment, and ahead, the wooden ones would de uh, would decompose. Yes. The wire takes True. years. Yes. So uh, what they call ghost traps, how long are these going to be around yes. on the bottom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, as man Putin himself, I mean, yeah. and when I, yeah. when I first started uh, uh, climbing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. uh, a bushel was a bushel measure right. rounded up. Yes, yes. And me and another uh, fellow that started opening the clam shop, he asked me what was fair for the diggers. Uh -huh. And I said, how are you selling them? He said, by the pound. That's the way to buy them. The way to buy them, exactly. And I tend to push that. I mean, we wasn't well liked. <laughs> yeah. But the diggers caught on. The diggers caught you were like And that. I mean, they got paid for what, what they had. Exactly, that's yeah. right. And the changes well, I've seen up through... Yeah, it's easy to round a bushel off for the buyer and take more, get more in the weight. So all those years that we sold by the measure, we inadvertently, maybe sometimes purposely, I don't know. Yep. Yeah. So but right on the boxes. Yeah. Uh, would say a bushel on the ninth, but they wanted it full. Yeah. Oh yes. I go. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, used to make, make me, you know, a little peeved about yeah everybody giving. Yeah. Extra. Yeah. So when they when the, they went over to the pounds, everybody's equal. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's all fair. Yeah. And because uh, back then when I first started, uh, there was no clam ordinances. Town. Mm -hmm. Yep. And in the uh, I think seventy, uh, Donbo took the first test case for law court. And all the other towns was kind of sat back and waiting to see. What the recourse? Uh, that's why we had a lot of problems. Other towns come in to test uh, oh, the uh -huh. I see. And I, the and they all said the minute that we that if this is a law, it's going to be a law, and it's worth we're, we're getting one. Uh -huh. So it, it was just. So you guys were on the forefront in terms. Well, we was right, of right, the resource. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it was for the uh, coastal towns. Yes. And when I went, to, when I was still going to school. I could go down, even at three dollars uh, bushel. Uh -huh. I could still make more than my fellow students from the Chai's High, uh -huh. was working in the, in the grocery stores and stuff. Yeah. Oh yes. Mm. Even then. I, I mean, I had more of an advantage because I mean, I did have uh, that coastal town. Right. Resource. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but I was, I was better than most people because they, they said most of the kids 
And I took a lot of kids at the time, mm -hmm. introduced yeah. them yeah. to the Klamath. I said, cool. extra money. Yes, extra money is right. And you, it's, a, it's a job, but it, it, whatever you, effort you put in is what you'll reap. That's, That's right. right. Now, back then, Johnny, tell me about the clams in Jonesboro. Where, 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 had they been hard hit or was it just coming back? It was just coming back. Just coming back. Okay. We, uh, in yeah. uh, early, late 50s, early 60s, uh, well, the, there was a green crab problem back then. Oh, even then. Okay. Wow. And wow. they tried a lot, but yeah. when the clams went out, in fact, some area of our shores, they said it, they want, called it one pack shore. That's all you could get the whole tides, one pack. The green crabs did such a number on the yep. that, that's wow. wow. So I've heard that they came in off the, the ships from overseas on yep. the hulls of the. It's an invasive species. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's not a good one. No, no. I, I've trapped them uh, uh -huh. as commercially. Yeah. But there's no commercial market. Yeah. No. Yeah. How uh, now? How was it this last summer? Because it's been a while since back home. As far as the green crab, you see them going down in terms of their ability to decimate the population of clams. Or? It's they're, they're still here yeah. in magnitude. Now, uh, Paula told me that down east, yeah, you have to struggle to get a bushel now. There's so many wow. green crabs. Yeah. Wow. And everybody says, well, uh, how come you? Uh, uh, they dig the clams out. They don't dig the clams out. They'll dig it down, mm -hmm. and when the head comes out, they'll snip the head off. Really? Wow. That's Jeez. what, I mean, sometimes you'll dig the clam out yeah, if it's yeah. real soft. But yeah. most of the time, how to dig it, they'll just, you see little cups in the water, mm. and yeah. uh, they just snip the head right off. Wow. So what made the clams come back to the green crab? Somebody told me a hard winter, a hard cold winter, will get rid of some of those green crabs. It, they claimed that that was yeah. uh, part of the, uh, the downfall on them. Uh -huh. I may remember, I think it was 70, 71. Even the Jones Sport Reach froze over. Really? Wow. wow. And it froze clear to uh, Shores Island, which they took uh -huh. a boat to get up the, there yep. because there's no open water. Uh -huh. We haven't had a winter like that since yep. then. Right, um, right. I mean, we've had mild winters. Mm -hmm. And another thing I've watched is where you got a lot more erosion on the shore. Mm -hmm. Washington County is known for clay. It, that's why yes. we ain't got great big gardens. Right. Yeah. And that's washing into the shore, stiffening up the mud. Mm -hmm. yeah. That boo had clay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's changing down there. Yes, it is. I, I mean, the younger ones don't see it because they haven't had the background to see it. Right. To remember it. Right. Yeah. So tell me when what a be, a, your best day digging clams uh, was back when there were plenty in the 70s. Plenty of them. Yeah. 11 and three packs. Oh, but that was on. bushels. Wow. That was the stretched out big baskets. Yeah. Now, probably 15, yeah. by the way. Yeah. So uh, that's three barrels, more than three barrels. Barrels, three bushel, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I didn't so think you just handfuls. Can't imagine. Uh, yeah. Well, you could flip them all by nails in layers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. And, and all uh, almost three inch clams. So it yeah. didn't take long to fill rollers. Right. Right. I mean, wow. and that was the heyday. And yeah. Now, I, uh, plus I'm the plan manager for the town of Jonesboro, mm -hmm. and I keep telling them, it's a million dollar industry down there if you mm -hmm. put something back. Exactly, right. It's like a garden. you yep. got to seed it. That's right. Mm -hmm. No different. And I proved it over the years. We, sure. We've seeded small batches of it and brushed yep. it, and yep. they've harvested, had good harvest. And I said, mm -hmm. you got to do it on more of a uh, consistency. Yes. Yeah, regular. Exactly. But, they, you know, a digger wants to dig today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, all it takes. About and it's right. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. Calling, and I'm, in fact, tracks. I have a phrase now. Go ahead. Tell me what your phrase is. I love to hear it. Uh, some of them will come up to me and say, "We got to do some seeding and brushing." I said, "You are farmers. I'm going to talk to you. I don't want to talk to the harvesters over there because all they want to do—that's what they're doing, mm -hmm. harvesting." Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have two categories. You want mm -hmm. people that want to put something back. And mm -hmm. people are just down there to harvest. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, as many or more that want to put something back, but I'm sure that kind of goes up and down. Well, how do you feel it is now? As well, it's it ain't it ain't changed that much. Mm. Back, uh, I was uh, back years ago. I was 4-H County coordinator mm -hmm. for 20 years. 
That's the mm. swim program, the Tico Lodge. I was yeah. kind of the head of that one too. I, I've been in so many things that no money. I mean, <laughs> yeah. well, you care, uh, but, you care for your environment yeah. where you live. You want to keep it going. Well, that's it. Yeah. And what scares me now is uh, we ain't got any birds. I mean, years ago, you, the, you, the, the, we had all kinds of birds. Mm -hmm. And now we got very few. See right. shore birds and, you know, there used to be swallows. We haven't got any. Wow. And I've noticed that. And I said, huh. that's why we're picking up ticks and, you know, more stuff. And so, I said, so yeah. you're thinking like the, the chain of life and how one yep. thing affects another. I yeah. Could oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's I mean, it's, and it's, uh, I, I like to take people down there and say, there's periwinkles here. There was mussels, but the green crabs have cleaned most of them out. They really, wow. Oh, I mean, mm. and back years ago, we had what they call, what I call kelp beds mm -hmm. and uh, mussels, 12 feet deep. Well, that mm. kelp kept our river clean. Yes. The mussel dragon. It's come in, yeah. broke the kelp out. That's gone. Then they dragged wow. the mussels. So yeah. actually, we got very few kelp for Peters left. Yes. To keep the rubber clean. Yeah. And right. I worked uh, for almost 20 years to get 270 acres open back up, pollution free. Mm -hmm. I mean, that opened up. I mean, there was no clams there because, yeah. you know, it hadn't been touched for 20 years. Uh, and but slowly working and building that back. Yeah. And Hopefully some of these it's not areas, too late. You know, and I, with, with our society being more environmentally concerned than ever, it's a good time to tap into that with yeah. people like yourself who really have had a history of being mm -hmm. concerned. And it's, it's almost like a fad now, but right. you get in there and do the kind of work that you and some others have done. Have you ever worked with Brian Beal from UMM in terms of? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, when we had the first, we had the first 4 H clam hatchery. Mm. Uh, in Jonesboro, and I think it's yeah. 84. 84. And Brian was here. He couldn't get a job anywhere. So I helped, but uh, I, I, I told him that Sam Chapman was the head of the Darling Center. He came uh -huh. up and started the clam hatchery. Yeah. And I said, we need Brian here. Yeah. He was going back to New Jersey. Right. So yeah. the University of Maine hired him. Good, good. And I said, and we talked about the Downey's Technical Institute. Yes. Way back then. Yeah. I said, we need something on the coast, Brian. Yes. Trees. Down here. Yep. Then Orono. We need something yeah. where you can step out and do it. That's right. 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 That's it's natural. Hands on. Yeah. Hands on. Yeah. Right. And it's a coming thing. Yes. In fact, uh, during that time frame, uh, I had a chance working with uh, Extension David Gray. Mm -hmm. He said, I've got a, you know, uh, an interview for you. Well, we went down to the field and landing. Mm -hmm. Here come this great big tour bus. That was teachers and professors from all over the country huh. got out and interviewed me. Wow. They were doing a tour class. on fish and everything down. Yeah. Yeah. And that was a start of Sea Grant. Yeah, wow. And they asked me what I see, and I looked up the river, and I, I see famine. Mm. I mean, we haven't even tapped this. Mm -hmm. It's been just wild. Yeah. And we've been just letting Mother Nature take care of it. Yeah, yeah. right. And uh, the Sometimes last thing I said, the last thing I told them, I said, but we got to remember the Dust Bowl. Yes. That we overdid. Mm -hmm. I mean, history, yep. look back in history, you can overdo. Yes, yeah. you can. Yep. That's right. So we have and, to be careful. That's right. And uh, it I mean, I've, I've washed it up on leasing and, and stuff. I mean, we haven't really tapped mm -hmm. the, the ocean's potential. Yes. And one right. thing, I took a course at the University of Maine on uh, kelp and, and other scallops and stuff, which I'm mm -hmm. familiar with. You know, it's just a refresher course. Yeah. And I sit there and they said uh, growing kelp and stuff mm -hmm. like they did in Asia. And I mm -hmm. said, well, what's going on over there? Mm -hmm. Well, they can't eat it now because they got so much polluted water. Oh. I went, so why, I why, why ain't we, they invested in us because mm -hmm. we so far have got some of the good clean water. That's mm -hmm. right. Especially and they turn it around. Yes, that's right. And everybody kind of looked at me kind of funny, like, what? I mean. You got to think ahead. That's right. I mean, they, 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 they need food over there. Uh -huh. We got the resources. That's right. Mm -hmm. So yes. let them invest in us. 
Uh huh. Yeah. That's right. And Yo, so, pin, uh, turn it around. The other way around. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So tell us about the lobster industry. Are there parallels in how the lobster industry has waxed and waned through the years in terms of its oh, yeah. or is it healthier than the clam industry? Well, uh, years ago, we, when we get done clamming, we could go out in a, like a small 21 foot boat mm -hmm. and you catch codfish, unlimited. Mm -hmm. You could blow the boat. Wow. They ain't there anymore. Oh. And codfish Groundfish was one of, the, one of the major things that ate little lobsters. Mm. So actually, oh, the codfish was a predator for the lobster. Really? Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, because I mean, we, we're not cleaning the fish. We found little small lobsters in them. Uh -huh. Yeah. And yeah. this was off Libby Island. Off. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And I said, when there's no predator for anything, mm -hmm. it's going to multiply. Yes. But just look at the green crabs. There's no predator. For... Right. There's no predator for them. Yeah. Well, the, uh, the gulls are. Yeah. Right. But the thing is, they are. They they don't they kind of hide during the daytime. Mm -hmm. At night is when they come out. Mm. Oh wow. yeah. And I said they said well why ain't the gulls getting them at night? And I said gulls can't see at night. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, People would just use their head. <laughs> I, that, that, look at what's happening, in Mother Nature here. Yeah, that's right. Wow. I mean, and but I yeah a few so years with ago. So with a with a cod being at an all time low, then the lobster started pro proliferating. Yeah, green, green crabs don't touch the lobsters. I've been told is that true. Well, green green crabs have eaten uh, the mussels, uh, the clams, mm -hmm. the eelgrass, and uh, nobody really knows if they take the little tiny lobsters. Mm. Well, it could be. I mean, the the, the, the yeah. smaller ones. Yeah. I mean, no, yeah. nobody's done a study on that. Yeah, at this point, right? Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're eating something down there. Yeah, yeah. they're eating something, right? And I, I know they, they, if the lobsters come up into the river, the green mm -hmm. crabs go further up. Yeah. They don't hang around where there's a lot of lobsters. Right, right. And wow. but really vice versa. I mean, them little green crabs, I mean, they they pick a, uh, the shellfish, then mm -hmm. it comes a lobster. Yeah. The wow. little lobster, grab him. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, wow. it's, it, nobody's done the actual study. Right. On, on them. So he's going on. Yeah. So, at, when you were digging and uh, 10, 11 bushel, were you hauling traps at the same time in between tides? Oh, yeah. Makes a lot. Yeah, that, through the summer months. Yeah. yeah. How many traps did you have at one time? Well, I, I uh, back then, a couple of hundred, because that's all you yeah. really wanted wooden traps. Right. Yeah. And right. this fishery was all inside. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's all well, down the shores. Mm -hmm. Not very... Nobody was really, I mean, you had a few big boats yeah. that was going out outside the, yeah. in the federal mm -hmm. waters. Right. But most of the it, your fishermen was all in, in close to shore and mm -hmm. main waters. Yes. Now, what, what I've seen is someone goes 40 miles offshore. Mm -hmm. And I said, how far can you go in the brood stock? Mm. I mean, you keep going and better and better until you fish out and then you go a little further. Mm -hmm. I mean, where's the end? Yeah, right. You know, mm -hmm. and the Department of Marine Resources adds all the lobster catch together, the federal and the state. So mm -hmm. I said, "What? How's the state water doing?" You yeah. actually, uh, you're, you're looking at the, all the dock landings, right? Yeah. And uh, so to, to manage a fishery or anything, your forest land, you get. I mean, you mm -hmm. got to know what yeah. you got. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they, the Canadian, I know the last less regulations that they have on their lobster fishing. Uh, how has that affected our ability here in Maine? Or I, here I, I keep thinking I'm home I'm uh, in Michigan, but yeah. how has it affected the Maine industry? Because I know they've got very little regulations. They can, I think they could catch the female ones. And there's no size limits. No, there's no size limit. Right. And they catch a little smaller lobster than we do. I see. Right. Actually, they got the check market in New York. Wow. I, I haul uh, seafood to New mm -hmm. York. So yeah. I've, I've seen the harvest and I've seen the consumer, mm -hmm. which most people don't see that. No, they don't. You're... And I said, I've had the opportunity to see the oh, whole sorry. thing through. Yeah, right. And I, uh, you, you know, they catch a little small, they, they have come out 
So if it's phenox and egg, they put it put it back. Now, mm -hmm. okay, but that's good. Yeah, I, I said when they started playing around with the the majors and stuff, I what instead of going state to state to mm -hmm. Canada with different rules and regulations, it should be international. Yeah, I would think because oh. it's the same waters. It makes I mean, the, the fish migrate. Yeah, sure they do. You know, it ain't just. Uh, you know, I shook my head on that one, mm -hmm. but when you're talking with, uh, it's hard job for a harvester to regulate himself. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I run across that. Want. I, yeah, you know, you've got to leave that outside the door and come in, in the best of the industry for everybody. Yeah, and you have to think of the future generations. Yeah, family members, you got a daughter that's fishing, and and how is it going to continue if we keep, you know, if we don't have some kind of regulation? Not right. regulation, but not a lack of any at all is not right. Good. So there's some kind of healthy balance, but we don't get it unless we have these kind of conversations that you're talking about. So right. Yeah. I, I it's it, it's I've seen the good mm -hmm. and I've seen the bad. Mm -hmm. And right now the losses are peaking. Um okay. come up to a, the uh, more or less uh unreal uh good catch. Mm -hmm. But they've had no predators. I mean, it's just been lobster, lobster, lobster. Right, right. And Which there's a lot more the lobster fishermen, but the ground fish industry has probably just dropped for some. Well, it's so right. The, yeah. I mean, I, I've said I remember when there was a lot of cod. Mm -hmm. Stop and think. We got codfish is cheap protein. Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see the fishery come back, but mm -hmm. they don't really want it because they might take they decrease the lobster. Yeah. And I yeah. said, lobsters is a high priced plate. Yeah. It's like the herring industry. Mm -hmm. If we took the millions of pounds they use for herring, for lobster bait mm -hmm. right. and canned it, but we yeah. haven't got any canneries anymore. No canneries. Um, yeah. And we got it. And that would be a product for shelf life. I mean, there were still yes. people in the world right. still going yeah. hungry. And maybe, maybe that will change as we begin to see hard times, the price of gas yeah. went up. You know, and, and we talk about local foods, you know, right. the generation, your kids, my kids, they're all about farm to table and local. Yeah. And they've got a they've got it right. That's the value that we want to go back to that was ruined because of big, big chains, yeah, industry, the lot of mom and pop stores. It all comes back to the same thing is trying to take care of where you're at and, yeah. and thinking ahead. So right. Yep. Well, I it, this last year I was looking over the Matthias is a Hannaford store, mm -hmm. walked in, and there's people standing there with empty shelves. I mean, they're looking. And I mm -hmm. said, money doesn't buy everything. That's right. That's right. I mean, yeah, you might have a wheelbarrow full of money, but if it ain't there, yeah. you can't buy it. Yeah, that's right. So you've got to get back to self-sufficiently. Yes. Maybe we'll be going back to bartering and trading. Well, there you go again. A few years ago, I, I started out at $3 a bushel. Mm-hmm. And uh, I stood there one day with a check for $3 a pound. And I asked another uh, uh, fella, uh, well, I'll tell you, Albert Preston, yeah. uh, the road flop. Yeah. I mean, he's an old man my time. Mm -hmm. And I said, Albert, it's like a time lapse. $3 a bushel to $3 yeah. a pound. And so you've seen it all. It's amazing. I've seen it right up through. And he could have related to. Yeah. And he said, yes, sir. Uh, he said, I'm thinking about that. <laughs> But I mean, the younger generation, that's the, that's what they see. That's that, all, that, all they see, right? Yeah. Well, they can't uh, appreciate it, yeah. No, no, they that's got right. nothing to, to look yeah. back on. That's right. right, yeah. And I told them, I said, in, in, uh, uh, we had a flat men's meeting a while ago, and I said, uh, well, I'm the clan manager, trying mm -hmm. to keep the audiences. Yeah. You know, I, uh, there's a lot more to it, non paying, but mm -hmm. maybe someday it'll be a paid position. That's right, yeah. the town. And you give a, yeah. I mean, somebody could step in and say, I can manage this. I can bring the clans back yep. from this guy getting two or three bushel mm -hmm. to five to ten. Yes. Or what the market. I mean, yeah. the clan digger, I, I've said, the clan digger, can, uh, it's got a control of his destiny, mm -hmm. but he doesn't know which way to go. Yeah, right. When I started worming, right. yep. it was the same as the clans. We dug mm -hmm. worms. And we didn't know what the price was going to be. It depended on how much they got. Yeah. Right. Well, we I we all got together. Wait a minute. Each one is worth so much. Mm -hmm. So what's the trade off? Well, the trade off was, okay. Now you're going to be limited, but you, we, every day we got the same amount for our one. Mm -hmm. So I said, 
we know what we're getting. That's right. right. It's consistency. And exactly. yeah. with the supply and demand, that goes back. Yes. I've asked for two dealers. I said, mm -hmm. you hit your market and you've got a steady market. All right. Mm -hmm. Small tides, you do pretty good. You mm -hmm. add that, you, sometimes you're hungry for clients. Mm -hmm. Big tides, you're, you're flooded with them. Mm -hmm. Then you got to buy them cheaper to move mm -hmm. them on the slot markets. Yes. Mm -hmm. I said, it, it wouldn't be easy to say, I need three bushel from you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What's your price? Set mm -hmm. the price for the whole year. Then it's, it's yeah. steady. Yeah. The same with the, the, with the worms. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. I said, Bottom. you know, she was a woman I, ain't, yeah. I, I, I ain't there quite yet. Wait. Yeah. You're not there, <laughs> but you'll get there. I've been pushing that one. Yeah. I mean, I, I see different. Uh, it's it's changing times. That's right. Times yeah. are changing. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. And I believe in fairness. Yeah. That's right. And but as far as going back to the lobsters, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, uh, when we first, when I first going, one crate was a was a good haul. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the lifestyles of the fishermen back then mm. uh, was use pickups. Yeah. Not seventy thousand dollar ones now. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. I mean, and million dollar boats. I said, yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. tapping into the industry. Yes. Well, you think? And that's why a selected few can fish. Yeah. And not uh, uh, they, they want to let in. I mm -hmm. said, yeah, the more you slack off, well, they don't like to uh, sharing any of the pie. Yeah. <laughs> no. Mankind is greedy at this point. I mean, I see it. Yeah. And I kept saying that's why. Harvesters can't regulate themselves. That's right. Yeah. 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 You, you, it, uh, it takes certain disciplined people to go yeah. in there and say, I have nothing to do with this. This yeah. is what it's going to be for the yeah. best of the industry and, and the and future think generation. Of it for yeah. the next generation. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I, I try, I keep pushing that, which I've been watching the last few years. We ain't had that many young kids. Hmm. Interesting. And, yeah. and, but they all got cell phones. Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, busy on. Yeah, <laughs> but I try to get them down there to show them it's a resource. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have a dollar in your pocket, yeah, in three hours you can have money in your pocket. That's right. Yeah, three four hours. That's it. I mean, it's it's really unreal. And the beauty and the being out in God's creation. Yeah, you can't compare it to being inside stocking a shelf. No, I mean, or any other job right. inside. That's yeah. right. Exactly. I mean, they talk about minimum wage, but I said, mm -hmm. it, you, you can double that or triple that if you yes. want, want to. I That's mean, the right. want has to be that too. Exactly. Yes, it does. It sure does. And, you know, I, I just say, well, and going back to teaching, mm -hmm. you can't teach, a lot of times you can't teach the older ones because they're setting their mm -hmm. ways. Setting their yeah. ways, right. So you go back to the kids. Yeah. They, they explain it to better. them and let them come out. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, that's the way, you know, I learned that in 4-H, I had to learn to earn. And, uh -huh. I mean, yeah. and uh, Brian, uh, Brian and I, we work together. Yes. I mean, yeah. I've got ideas, and I do brushing and reseeding, mm -hmm. much like a garden. There's yes. certain uh, things that will take and certain mm -hmm. places it will work. Yes. You have to figure exactly. it out. Yeah. And uh, I said, I've been doing this since 72. Huh. The experimental with yeah. DMI biologist, I mean, mm -hmm. so I've got it down pat. I mean, and when I say we're going to brush an area, and in three couple of three years, they got beautiful climbing. Mm -hmm. I uh, I can't go down and have them brush, and say, well, how come that didn't work? To see, I know it worked. Mm -hmm. We have to put the effort in it. Exactly, yeah. that's right. That's and right. I said, tell it's, us about your business, Cox Trap Shop. Now. I know that Rebecca has had some, uh, has promoted that. Now you don't just make traps, you make different things with the wires. And I know that maybe there's some people that would like to hear about what kind of products you offer. Well, uh, I made, I, I, well, up to about eight months ago. Mm -hmm. And then I've had uh, bladder cancer. Mm. So I kind of let Andrew take over the wire clam rollers. Yep. yep. And Rebecca, more or less, do the bird feeders, the little okay. wire. Yep. I mean, it's it's like passing it down. I was just gonna say, it's a beautiful way to to yep. keep it going. I mean, if they want to, I it, uh, I mean, this is yep. what this is how I uh, you uh, you had spending money, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. And I said, you know, it's what they want. I mean, and people That's have right. gone. 
the little bed feeders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, they go crazy. The little ram got the trap bed feeders. Yeah. And then, then the little wire losses and the crabs and that stuff. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I mean, I, I well, the fellow uh, asked me, they, he said, how do you think of this stuff? Uh, I never said, and people, a lot of people said, I never seen stuff like this. I said, <laughs> J J I don't care anymore. Don't the mean? joke's on me. They don't let too many of them sell it at a time. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a it's a unique thing that you guys have done with with a with a common resource that's yeah. recognizable back home. I mean, how different is it from the lady up in Aroostook County who takes moose poop and makes jewelry out of it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you heard about the lady. But oh, I have. It's so funny that she's able to do that all dry. Of course, it's they eat just veg vegetarian. Yeah. Stuff, so. Yeah. It's not as well, nasty as you think. You remember when I first started the twig wreath business? Yes. Back in 95. Right. Yes. Uh -huh. And everybody, I started the, in the Christmas wreath business. Then I said, it's going to be a year round business here. Mm, so we got so into I, the twig business. Right. Exactly. And people said, well, what do you think of them? And I said, personally, mm -hmm. uh, I'll make them. And the, as I'm saying, a pool of his money soon pat. He was in the eye of beholder. <laughs> they like it. They're going to yeah. buy it. That's and, right. I mean, it just took off. I did it. You know, nothing to me. <laughs> so, Johnny, as we, we close out, and I want to offer to pray for you, I know that a lot of people that are watching now would like to offer their prayers for you, but tell us where you are in your journey with that, with the bladder cancer at this point. Uh, so far, I, the what tests I've done, they mm -hmm. ain't found anything. Praise God. I mean, we, I was supposed to have got it all. Chemos, yeah. Huh? And They've got it all. all. They, they haven't found anything. Found I got anything. one more scan. They've uh -huh. done the x-rays and the scan everything. Mm -hmm. And they they haven't. I'm clean. Wow. So, wow. so they, uh, the, I got one more test to do. Praise yeah. God. Wow. And I said, well, uh, well, when they told me that I had bladder cancer, I said, mm. it is what it is. Yep. I mean, I, yep. the, the things that I've done over the years, lots of fishing, dragging, cutting wood. Yep. I yep. mean, back when you peeled, I had to peel so much wood to sell so much. Yeah. Yep. And I, I, I was back there. Mm -hmm. And now she wouldn't say that, well, not, a human hand don't even touch it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's machinery going in and nobody touches the wood. It just goes right to the direct. Yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. it come from a, a, a skid off up to there. Uh huh. And I told them, I said, uh, it's a wonder I got four limbs and, and a neck, you know, yeah. <laughs> some, some of the stuff that, you know, I don't even talk about it. <laughs> yeah. So before we close the prayer, I, I, I did this one question that I wanted you to share. I know I've got my own stories of, uh, and most clam diggers or even lobster fishermen, but uh, funny story uh, of when tourists came into town and they wanted to, to know what you did. Can you re recollect a time where maybe they came out with a shovel or a plunger or asked a question that was ridiculous. Ridiculous. Well, humorous. Uh, I've, I've, I've been I'm sure you've got a few. A slack man. And uh -huh. I've also been the clam warden mm -hmm. of the town. So I've mm -hmm. come up through. Yes. And I had a complaint that there was some diggers in a, in a cove. Uh -huh. Okay. So I went down, sat on the shore, looked out. Well, they had a barn shovel. <laughs> but I just took it. and they were digging with a barn with an old barn shovel. And I, I just looked at uh, well, I don't know. Then they were putting them in a paper bag. Oh my goodness. They put probably mud clamps or whatever they I mean, yeah. I yeah. And there's three of them out there. Oh my goodness. And and after a while the bag got wet. So when they put them in the bag and walked ahead, you can see them going through the bottom of the bag. I got up, walked back up to the car, said, complaint unfounded. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> Whatever they got, they earned. <laughs> that's a great story to end on, one Johnny. Bite. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you a lot more, but I mean. Yeah, I bet you could. I'm so glad <laughs> we're connected with you, and maybe we'll do it again. I know I'd love to. We're watching Rebecca's uh, pageant coming up soon, so we've told her that we've got to have a second interview with her. Um, but we want to pray for you. I know uh, you said they haven't found any, and I believe that's got to be an answer to prayer. That's so exciting. We know yeah. God heals. Uh, I've had well, I know there's a reason yeah. for me Everything. to keep going. I don't that's know what right. that is. 
He's well, got more plans for you. He does. Well, this year, I, I'm also uh, the town tax assessor now. Ah. And I'm also the master of the Grange downtown here now. I mean, I'm, yeah. I, I, I'm getting taxed, so I ain't going to have to spend an evening at home anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to find some you, more people. You, you don't have time to sleep. I, I'm looking for our predecessors, but right. nobody wants the responsibility. Wants of, uh, yeah. No, sad. And, sad. You know, yeah. another thing I want to talk to you about is our forest land. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I kind of taught Moral, and I, I went over there and helped him. Yep. The, the reef business. Moral was I mean, yep. you, when you're doing LL Bean, the quality. Yes. Yep. And we stood there, and I said, you, you've got to get your own brush somehow. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he just, I, I kind of pushed him into helping him get into the uh, the veterans, reach mm -hmm. across America. Yes, yeah. Because I said, LL Bean's only one company. Right. Veterans of Worldwide. That's right. And just, he's bought a lot of land, developing mm -hmm. it into brush. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's, it's brush farming now. Mm -hmm. nice. I mean, he paid he paid a lot of money because yeah. of fines because there was no such thing as brush farming. Mm -hmm. It was all called clear cutting. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then the fines. So he, he had to get that straightened out. Yeah. And what I've mm -hmm. seen in our woodland, our price of wood has dropped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, studwood right now is less than it was ten years ago. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I've uh, said. It's no good in the round. I mean, no. you work and you get a load of pulpwood and by the time you pay the stumpage and every, all that, mm -hmm. you might get $500 for that whole load of trail of wood. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of work. Yeah, yes, it is. Especially with yeah. a chainsaw and an old yeah. cable. Together. And all your overhead. Yeah. yeah. All the overhead. Yeah. And yeah. I I told them, I said, you square it up. Mm -hmm. You just uh, square the lumber up. Then it's worth some money. Mm-hmm. In the round, it, you're giving it away, but if you're right. squared up, yeah. so people can break it down. Right, lumber yard, I mean, cutting. It's yeah. it, it, that's the next market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is. Exactly. You know, the, the, well, we got no mills, bro. No mills no. closed. I know. I mean, uh, we've lost our pa sardine packers. Yeah, we've I lost. I mean, yeah. again, and, that's another resource that needs to go back to local instead of the big. Giants. I mean, the same thing yeah, happened yeah. out here in Michigan with farming. They've got yeah. big equipment. And it's hard farms. to find the smaller farmer now. They got so much overhead. It is difficult to. And the price yeah. of the Yeah. Wow. It's like well, uh, 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 told me down in, uh, well, Pud, Louisiana, that now there's combines and stuff setting down there with the mm -hmm. woods growing up. So they're paying them to grow trees instead of farm. Wow. Yeah. And I went, uh, crazy. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, yeah. here's a nation that needs people that hungry. Yeah. And we're growing right. trees. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. I know. Uh, wow. Sometimes you wonder at, at what's you going wonder. on at the top. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and the Lord is saying, you think you know better, uh, go ahead. But hopefully yeah. more people will, will, will come up through the ranks like yourself with common sense and more of us will listen. Yeah. And start doing the right thing. And find yep. that unique balance between some regulation, local, right, and not devastating the resource. So that's right. I mean, and hard it, it, work. Hard work. It, well, but, there's nothing wrong with hard work. That's right. I, I don't think it's killed anybody yet. No, that's nobody's. Right. Uh, you know. I guess that's to forget where hard work killed them. Yeah. I mean, kind <laughs> of giving you a bad back. Uh, some yeah, of us. Uh, but and a hard lesson. Yeah. I don't want to that's do right. this anymore. Yeah. 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 Well, let's but close in a prayer, Johnny. Yeah. I'll pray for you and. And we'll let you know the comments that came on board. We'll we'll do this again and keep everybody up to date. So glad that you have great um, a report from your health. And yes. so let's bow yep. out. Everybody that's listening now, thank you so much for, for making this possible tonight. Father, we pray for Johnny. We praise you for his life. We praise you for uh, dying on the cross for him, Jesus, and for giving him this positive outlook, trying to uh, help the local man down east. And and to preserve a resource. And Father, thank you for his recent uh, uh, good report of, of no cancer being found. Lord, we pray a complete healing and that you would give him strength, fortitude, and wisdom. Pray that you would walk with him and he would walk with you and that you would let him know that there's a whole bunch of people praying for him and loving on him and thinking about him on a daily basis. Thank you so much for his children and for the community in which he lives. We pray for Downey's Maine, Lord. 
uh, tonight. We pray that somehow, and, and it seems crazy to think about, about Lord, those necessary things we used to have, and I keep calling it we, because uh, once out of Maine, Maine's never out of yourself. Lord, the factories would come back, and that you would have the lumbering to be what it used to be, and the fishing, and, and all those industries that really uh, help Washington County down East Maine thrive, Lord. Thank you, Father. We pray for Johnny tonight. Bless him, Lord, and thank you for our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Love you, Johnny. We will, we will stay in we'll touch. Talk soon. Well, yeah, because I've got a lot of other issues. That's okay. Good enough. We want uh, to hear them. Environmental, they all, the industries. I mean, this town had, had six gas stations yeah. in 1970. Wow. Yeah. And we'll, we had over 100 right clam diggers. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, it used to be. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We love you. Let's yep. plan on it next month. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Monthly. Okay. <laughs>